Hey everyone and welcome to a new video. Just like in my last tutorial, there's currently a pretty loud construction going on in the house where I live in, so today's tutorial will once again have to feature an artificial voice. So let me know how you like the voice in the comments down below. So today's video will answer one of the oldest myths of the Zim community, which is about how the Zim synchronization works and what it does. I will first explain the concept behind the synchronization feature, and after that, I will go over the four different synchronization profiles and explain you what they do. In the next topic, I will show you three additional synchronization profiles that you can only access through a fairly unknown trick. Most people probably have never heard of that trick, but it's actually a really useful one with lots of benefits. In the last part of the video, I will explain you how synchronization will affect your mouse movements and performance in the game. As always you can find an agenda on the left if you would like to skip a part of the video, or if you would like to directly jump to the topic of your interest. But let's start with the first topic of the video, what is synchronization and how does it work? To answer that question, we have to go back a few years into the past. When the Zim 4 and Zim Apex came out, they both didn't have any synchronization. So they effectively ran on the synchronization off profile, that you nowadays know as a selectable option for the Zim Apex. For the Zim 4 this wasn't much of an issue due to its 125Hz polling rate, but for the Zim Apex it caused quite a bit of mouse stutter because of its much higher polling rate. You will later learn why the polling rate matters so much. So to solve this stutter issue, the Zim developers introduced the synchronization feature. The idea was to tie the output of the Zim Apex to the processing loop of the game to provide a smoother and better mouse experience. So instead of throwing as many inputs at the game as possible, from which only a few inputs will actually be accepted by the game, the new synchronization feature processes your inputs first, and then hands them over to the console in the most convenient way. Imagine the following example for a better understanding, you are working at the assembly line for Tesla in the new Giga factory in Berlin. Because you are an excellent worker, you need one minute to pick up an item from the assembly line, work a little bit on it, and put it back on the moving line. So every minute you can pick a new item and process it. Now this will only work well for as long as the speed of the assembly line is synchronized to your working speed. But if the assembly line is too fast, then you will have difficulties to even pick up an item. And if it's too slow, you will wait for the next item to arrive because you already finished the previous one a while ago. The Zim synchronization fixes exactly that mismatch, it lets you synchronize the speed of the assembly line to the workers who are sitting right next to it. And as the basis for this synchronization the Zim developers decided to use the frame rate of a game. I will explain you what I mean by that, when we look at the individual synchronization options. You can find those by entering the editing mode of your current configuration. Swipe to the right to enter your hip configuration and expand the advanced settings under the sensitivity option. The Zim Apex allows you to use four different synchronization options. The first one is synchronization off. This will result in your Zim sending as many inputs to the console as it can. If you think of our previous assembly line example, then you will understand that this option has the potential to make the assembly line move too fast for the workers sitting right next to it. The next synchronization profile is default. This profile will group your inputs to chunks that match the packet size of the 125Hz standard. Therefore, this profile is ideal for games that run with 120 frames per second, because the input packets almost perfectly match the frame rate of the game. The next synchronization profile has also been designed around a very common frame rate. This profile is optimized for the 62.5Hz standard, and therefore is ideal for games with 60 frames per second. And at last we have the synchronization slow profile. Its intention is to synchronize your inputs to the 31.25Hz standard. Because of that it's a great choice for games that run with 30 frames per second. So as you can see, pretty much all synchronization profiles are based on the typical frames per second that console games are running on. They will sync your mouse and keyboard movements to the frame rate output of the console, which results in smoother and better mouse movements. But these four synchronization profiles are not the only ones you can use. There are three more secret ones that are hidden behind the polling rate feature. To access those, you have to first set the synchronization profile to off again. After that, save your Zim configuration in the top left and exit it. Now head into the global settings by clicking on the options button in the top right corner. As you can see, I currently use a polling rate of 125Hz. As you just learned, synchronization off means that the Zim will send as many inputs to the console as it can. 
And due to the 125 Hz polling rate, this means that the fastest it can send an input to the console is every 8 milliseconds. Therefore the synchronization off speed is capped by the 125 Hz. Your Zim has to accumulate your inputs over 8 milliseconds before it can send them to the console. This setup is therefore equal to using synchronization default. To quickly get back to the beginning of the video, this is the setup that the Zim 4 is using. It runs on 125 Hz and doesn't have any synchronization profile. So by setting your Zim Apex to 125 Hz and the synchronization to off or default, you can mimic the feeling of a Zim 4. But we can of course step up the game by changing the polling rate to 250 Hz. Once again, because of synchronization off, the Zim will send as many inputs to the console as it can. But now it is capped by the 250 Hz standard. This means that it has to accumulate your inputs over 4 milliseconds before it can send them to the console. This results in 250 inputs per second, and is therefore ideal for games with 240 frames per second. But we can of course also go above that, by switching the polling rate to 500 Hz. This will result in your Zim accumulating your inputs over 2 milliseconds before it can send them to the console. So in theory this would be great for games that run on 500 frames per second, but so far no monitor on the market supports such a high refresh rate. This option can still be beneficial though to make your mouse movements more responsive. I'll cover that in more detail in the last topic. And at last there is the 1000Hz mode. The Zim will then send with the maximum amount of inputs per second that the console can accept. The PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S all support up to 1000 inputs per second. And with these settings your Zim operates at exactly that speed. This will allow you to play with the lowest possible lag you can get. But in reality no console game was designed to process inputs at such a high rate. This is why the synchronization off profile, together with a very high polling rate usually result in a lot of mouse stutter. The poor worker in the Tesla factory just cannot keep up with the speed of the assembly line, and he might even hurt his fingers when trying to pick up one of the incredibly fast-moving items. Now in the last topic let's look at how the different synchronization profiles affect your mouse movements. The concept is always the same, the slower the synchronization profile, the more aim assist you will have. So synchronization slow or common offer more aim assist than default, or the higher profiles. If your game doesn't offer any aim assist options, then this is a great way to customize the aim assist strength. Also, faster synchronization values will make it easier to break into or out of the aim assist bubble. Next to that, faster synchronization settings will make your mouse movements feel more responsive and direct. But keep in mind that a synchronization change will always change your mouse speed as well, so you will have to readjust your Zim sensitivity if you want to keep the same mouse speed. Here you can see the conversion sheet to get the same mouse speed as before. And you can of course also use different synchronization settings for your hip and aim down sights configuration. With the synchronization feature, you also have the option to match the output of your Zim to the native polling rate of the console, which usually results in an excellent aim assist experience. This is what I showed you two weeks ago in my previous tutorial. And now that you have watched this synchronization video, you probably have a better understanding on how that aim assist trick from two weeks ago actually works. So let me know what synchronization settings you usually play with, and which ones you like the most. Guys, if you like this video, hit the like button or even subscribe to this channel. And for the crazy guys out there, you can even support the channel now by becoming a channel member. I do really, really appreciate that. Channel members also get exclusive benefits such as early access to all new videos. Also, let me know if you would like to see more of these tutorial videos and don't forget to post your own suggestions in the comments down below. But that's about it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching and I will maybe see you in the next one.